the doomsday clock symbolizing how near humanity is to complete destruction has been moved one second forward to 89 seconds to midnight, the closest it's ever been. Well, yeah, fork found in kitchen, shit's bad. Don't panic team, this channel has not become a conspiracy thing overnight. I'm not predicting the end of the world. And even if I did, like, don't, don't listen to me. The doomsday clock is a legit thing. It's a symbol that represents how close we are to literally destroying the world with horrors of our own making. The clock is set every year by the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists, whose backstory is crazy and includes Oppenheimer. You know, the movie? What, you thought Killian Murphy had nothing to do with the doomsday clock? Wrong. I'm gonna mention him a lot, actually. <laughs> so who are these science guys? How do they know we're on the verge of destruction? Will the doomsday clock inspire some change before we cark it? And what actually happens when it does hit midnight? Before we figure out when we're dying, we have to have a little history lesson. Just a little tiny one, I promise it's little. Starring Killian Murphy, the US government, and in its first ever role, the nuclear bomb. So like, if you didn't know, the US dropped two nuclear bombs in World War II. Most people who were part of the secret government mission which created the first atomic bomb, the Manhattan Project, didn't know what they were building. But the scientists did, and many of them tried to stop its creation and use right from the start. Oppenheimer was there, if you remember from the film Oppenheimer starring Killian Murphy. He was the director of the Manhattan Project's Los Alamos Laboratory. Leo Szilard and Albert Einstein both tried to stop the bomb, writing to President Franklin Roosevelt in 19. And then again, six years later, Leo, Nobel laureate James Frank, and other fellow Manhattan Project scientists signed a cautionary document known as the Frank Report, which they sent to the US Secretary of War. That report tried to say it would be better to just show what the bomb could do, forcing Japan's surrender rather than actually using the weapon on human people. In the film, Oppenheimer, starring award-winning actor Killian Murphy, his whole thing was like, oh, the bomb might end the war in the Pacific. Oh, maybe it can help people. Oh. Well, spoiler alert, it didn't, and both of those written attempts failed, so the US went right ahead and used two nuclear bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan in August of 1945. Leo Szilard called the use of the bomb one of the greatest blunders of history. So all the scientists who were horrified by the bomb got together to discuss how to inform the public about science and its implications on wider humanity, and blah blah blah, skip skip skip, nah, nah, nah. they formed the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists. They made their magazine, which was mostly scientific articles, and in 1947, they established the Doomsday Clock. Now, the Bulletin's Science and Security Board sets the clock in late January of every year. The Bulletin's Science and Security Board was first established by Albert Einstein in 1948, with J. Robert Oppenheimer as its first ever chair. You know, like the movie, Oppenheimer. Now though, the group is made up of 18 experts with diverse backgrounds ranging from policy and diplomacy to military history and nuclear science. So they're all very smart and they definitely do know what they're talking about. But like, what does the clock mean? How do they figure out how close we are to the end of times? The bulletin currently recognizes three major threats to civilization. Climate change, nuclear proliferation, and disruptive technologies. They said, quote, each of these threats has the potential to destroy civilization and render the earth largely uninhabitable by human beings. We love that. On Tuesday, the clock was set to 89 seconds to midnight, which is the closest we've ever been. For the last two years, we've been sitting at 90 seconds to midnight. According to the bulletin, this was mainly due to the climate crisis, Israel-Hamas conflict, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and the potential of a nuclear arms race. So, yeah, how did it get worse? According to the bulletin's press release, in 2024, humanity edged ever closer to catastrophe. Trends that have deeply concerned the Science and Security Board continued, and despite unmistakable signs of danger, national leaders and their societies have failed to do what is needed to change course. Consequently, we now move the doomsday clock from 90 seconds to 89 seconds to midnight, the closest it has ever been to catastrophe. Ooh. 
<laughs> Why did it? The press release also notes that ongoing conflicts continue to show signs of possibly developing into nuclear war. Quote, at any moment because of a rash decision or through accident or miscalculation. They're also concerned about another pandemic, noting the off-season appearance of highly pathogenic avian influenza and its spread to farm animals and humans. Artificial intelligence unsurprisingly got some mentions in there, with the bulletin saying that there is an increase of AI integration into militaries and concerns that mega powerful countries are trying to place nuclear weapons into orbit like in space up there that is so sci-fi and not in a good way like isn't that literally the death star don't make a death star i feel like no one should have to say that don't make a death star this don't make a death star please How Misinformation is another contributing factor to the clock moving forward. All of these dangers are greatly exacerbated by a potent threat multiplier. The spread of misinformation, disinformation, and conspiracy theories that degrade the communication ecosystem and increasingly blur the line between truth and falsehood. Yikes. Anyone else feeling a little, little hot? A little stressed out? Anyone else freaking out right now? Oh my god. How can we stop the clock? How can we turn back time? Cher, are you there? Did you ever figure out how to turn back time? Like, it's, it's kind of urgent. I am very aware that I've just ruined your day. Maybe even your week. But I have a positive spin. Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> First of all, Oscar winner Killian Murphy seems to be okay. That's important. And we still have 89 seconds. It's not over till it's over. 89 seconds is like almost a minute and a half. And with our attention spans, it's kind of ages, uh, kind of. Bulletin members have constantly emphasized that the clock is not intended to freak us out and make us fearful, but rather to spur us into action. Board member Professor Robnett Rosner calls the clock the canary in the coal mine, which prompts miners to take quick action to save their lives, saying, the number of ways in which we walk blithely into Armageddon is very high, but that's something all of us can help address. If we act now, we might avoid some of the worst civilization-threatening outcomes. Agitate for change. It's not too late. And the clock has been turned back before. Like in 1953, the clock sat at just two minutes to midnight, mainly due to the US deciding to pursue the hydrogen bomb, despite opposition by many nuclear scientists. And they also did those gnarly H-bomb tests in the Pacific Ocean. But fortunately, by 1960, the clock was set back to seven minutes. And in 1963, we got all the way back to 12 minutes, baby. When the Cold War finally ended in 1980, 89, the 1990 clock was set at 17 whole minutes to midnight. So we totally can bring it back. But how? Well, look, let's just be real. None of us watching this are leaders of the free world or award-winning actor Killian Murphy. And if a world leader is, for some reason, watching this video, I would question how you have enough time. But we do have some power, y'all. I think a personal contribution we can make on a day-to-day -day level is to avoid misinformation and be able to spot it. A simple way to do this is to choose your favorite verified sources and just choose to rely on them, even when the news you see doesn't match your personal opinions. For example, this bulletin website has so much incredible archiving and information. They also publish free articles almost every day that explain difficult subjects in the world through the lens of science. Now, girls, look, I failed science in high school and even I got sucked into this and learned like maybe too much. You know it's verified information because it's published by the Bulletin, who I ever so gracefully taught you earlier have been committed to educating the public since World War II. You can even go through and easily look at every clock from every year and see what was happening and why. Also, they have a doomsday clock playlist on there, which is crazy it's actually fully crazy they've got minutes to midnight by midnight oil and one of the songs is just called russians like oh my god are you serious like oh that much that much Knowing history allows you to predict the future. That's what my history teacher told me in high school. And I actually passed that class with flying colors. So you know he was right. How do you feel about the doomsday clock? Are you freaking out or is it business as usual? Hopefully though, we can get Killian Murphy's thoughts on the matter very soon. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe, everybody. We have five new videos a week on anything you can imagine. Um, also, I think they missed something in the playlist. They should have done a remix of that Madonna and JT song. Only got 89 seconds to save the world. Hesitating. Grab a boy and grab a girl. Only got 89 seconds to save the world. It kind of works. It kind of works.